I'm a minute early. We're still waiting on the bell here yet to hit 10. There we go. Turn on mine. It feels like a year since last Sunday. It's been a busy week. Um, we had the funeral on Monday, and I was able to see Pat in Sioux Falls, and had my district meeting in Sioux Falls, and we spent some time with my mom in Sioux Falls. And, um, so it just seems like a lot, the week is full of a lot of stuff. It goes by quick, but it also makes it seem like just a few days ago was a year ago. So um, I will say this. You may have saw me. You may have seen me uh, struggling a little bit with the screen. I don't know what happened when it got put away when I wasn't here. But it, I think there may be a problem with it. So um, pray that it doesn't collapse or fall down when I'm moving it in the middle of the service. And uh, uh, we have it up today. Uh, today is our mission festival. Uh, as you should know, since it's 10 o'clock instead of 9, uh, Colleen Hoffman is here from um, Safe Place. And Mitchell used to, used to be, uh, 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 goodness gracious, I'm going to totally forget the old name now. Uh, Mitchell Safe House <laughs> is what it used to be. And she was, has her family with her today. So I uh, encourage you to, to mingle and get to know her throughout uh, after the service and throughout the meal time. Uh, she'll be sharing with us uh, a kind of broad overview of everything they do and, and probably, sadly, the, the need, uh, I would imagine, as well. Um, I have a children's message I'm going to do uh, in the service as well. Pay attention. The service is a little bit differently ordered today because I wanted to be able to pray at the end so that I could be specific in prayer for what we hear in our presentation as well. Uh, speaking of prayers, we want to continue to keep Pat in prayer. Uh, I mean, you, you look at her, and you, you, it's hard to believe she was in an accident. She, she looks good, um, but the reality is she's in immense pain from the, the back injury. And so uh, we pray that they continue to go with the plan that she hopefully can be able to be moved to Mitchell this week so that she can be much closer for her physical recovery. Um, and then uh, speaking of accidents, uh, Dee, Dee met a deer yesterday, so we want to keep her in prayer and all of us really just be mindful of our drives around. Um, keep us safe in that. We always pray for God's protection. And the, the many times he protects us and we take it for granted, we're reminded every now and then of how real that threat is. Uh, and then the reality as well, um, uh, what day was that accident? Friday. Uh, on Friday, um, Seth Dykstra was driving a silage cart and uh, uh, a 13-year-old young man drove into it on a four-wheeler apparently and lost his life. And so... Um, that, that young man belonged to the Overweg family. We want to keep them in prayer, but also Seth, Seth as well. Um, I can't imagine if I was involved in an accident that took somebody's life, whether it was my fault or not, that would still affect, affect you mentally and, and emotionally. And so we want to keep uh, both the family of the deceased as well as Seth in prayer because that's a pr really serious uh, situation to deal with. Uh, many thank yous to uh, the, I don't know if you've been downstairs yet, but... Uh, Many hands have been working to clean the church this month as well as to put on this Harvest Festival. And uh, so thank you to the many people involved. And I, I won't name names just because there's too many and I'm sure I'd forget somebody who did something. Um, also thank yous that they're out there in the bulletin as well. But uh, thank yous for just the many ways that we maintain this church. Many hands are part of that. Uh, and then additionally for the women's group because maintenance of the church isn't just the physical building. It's also the people in it. And so I'm very thankful that, that um, our church was part of hosting the WMF Women's District Rally. Um, and I, I hope that that was an encouragement to the ladies who were there. And I hope that from that they can, they can uh, continue to encourage um, all of our women in our congregation and in our association of churches, uh, especially in this time when, when womanhood is just under threat in so many ways. And so we want to keep that in prayer. Um, the two things youth-related, and I'll hit this on the youth group meeting as well on Wednesday, but uh, there's an opportunity on the, the Bible College campus on October 20th and 21st. Uh, many of our youth probably already got this uh, in their homes, um, but if you know uh, anyone in, in high school who uh, may be considering or interested in uh, looking at the Bible College, there's a, an opportunity to spend a couple days there. Uh, it's called Up Close get to hang out with the students and uh, eat on campus and go into some of the classes. And there's a lot of fun activities as well and opportunities to earn scholarship money. So if you, you or your, you know anyone or yourself are interested in uh, attending this or even praying for it, I have some uh, extra uh, 
I would say brochures, but whatever they're called, the, that have the details of that. And then see you at the poll, which is a national um, prayer opportunity for students. It has uh, students to lead prayer on their campuses is the last Wednesday in September, September 28th, and uh, around college and high school campuses, um, many uh, students will be stepping out to pray for their schools, for their nation, for each other um, at their uh, school uh, flag poles that usually around 7 a.m. That, that Wednesday morning. So if you're interested to talk about being a part of that or need help in organizing that or interested in more information, please uh, let me know. I think it's a very important opportunity for students to, to partner with others as well in uh, emphasizing prayer and God in our schools. Any other announcements or prayer requests at this time? Okay, well, with that, uh, I invite you to rise as you're able. We're going to open with our, our call to worship, which will be read responsibly from within your inserts in your bulletin. Our call to worship this morning is from Psalm 119, beginning one, verse 129. Your testimonies are wonderful, therefore my soul keeps them. I open my mouth and pant because I long for your commandments. Keep steady my steps according to your promise and let no iniquity get dominion over me. Make your face shine upon your servant and teach me your statutes. We continue in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning for the rain falling upon the parched ground. We pray that in this service this morning that our hearts and minds are like that dry ground, that you rain upon us in your worship, that you minister to us through this service, through your word and, and through our singing to you. May, you. may you refresh and renew us with the living water that comes from you. May our souls overflow so that as we leave this place today, we may be encouraged, even as we may hear things that are discouraging and a huge need for families and women and, and, and in our communities and in our state. May we also recognize the abundance of your life that flows from your word and from the testimony of your life and the testimony of your people. And so bless us this morning, Lord, through this service we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Congregation may be seated. Our opening hymn is O oh, for a Thousand Tongues to Sing, number 181.
congregation to rise as you're able. We continue on page two in our hymnals with our confession of sin before our God. We bow our hearts and minds before the Lord, confessing together, Almighty God, our Maker and Redeemer, we poor sinners confess to you that we are by nature sinful and unclean, and that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. Therefore, we flee for refuge to your infinite mercy and ask you for Christ's sake, grant us forgiveness of all our sins and by your Holy Spirit, increase in us true knowledge of you and of your will and true obedience to your word to the end that by your grace, we may come to eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. of God's grace to us this morning comes from Isaiah chapter 1 verse 18. Come now and let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are as scarlet, they will be as white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, they will be like wool. We think of the imagery of that as kind of an outward imagery, but our our scripture readings this morning speak of the fact that it's our hearts that are that are the dirtiest and that are the brokenest and and when we come to Christ, he is the one that is able to transform our hearts from what we confessed, from our, our natural instinct to be sinful, and, and, and we're born to, to be broken and, and not be as godly and good and pure as the white snow. But then Christ transforms our hearts, and that's, that's the grace we have received, that we are made whole, we are made right, so that what comes out of us is the goodness of God. So keep that in heart and in mind as we continue with our service and we'll, we'll sing a song but then reflect upon that when we read our text later as well. You may be seated. Our continued service continues with Victory in Jesus, number 542.
comes from Deuteronomy 4, 1 through 2, and 6 through 9. And now, O Israel, listen to the statues and the rules that I am teaching you, and do them, that you may live and go in and take possession of the land that the Lord, the God of your fathers, is giving you. You shall not add to the word that I command you, nor take from it, that you may keep the commandments of the Lord your God that I command you. Keep them and do them, for that you will be for that will be your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the peoples, who, when they hear all these statutes, will say, Surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. For what great nation is there that has a God so near to it as the Lord our God is to us? Whenever we call upon him, and what great nation is there? that has statues and rules so righteous as all the law that I set before you today. Only take care and keep your soul diligently, lest you forget the things that your eyes have seen, lest they depart from your heart all the days of your life. Make them known to your children and your children's children. The second reading comes from Ephesians 6, 10 through 20. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Put on the whole armor of God, that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rules, rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of the evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day having done all to stand firm. Stand, therefore, having fastened on the belt of truth and having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and as shoes for your feet, having put on the readiness given by the gospel of peace. In all circumstances, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming darts of the evil one, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God praying at all times in the spirit with all prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert with all preser preser preservance, making supplication for all the saints, and also for me, that words may be given to me in opening my mouth boldly to proclaim the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains, that I may declare it boldly as I ought to speak. Please rise for the reading of the Holy Gospel. Our Gospel lesson this morning comes from the book of Mark, chapter 7, beginning with verse 14. And Jesus called the people to him again and said to them, Hear me, all of you, and understand. There is nothing outside a person that by going into him can defile him. But the things that come out of a person are what defile him. And when he had entered the house and left the people... His disciples asked him about the parable, and Jesus said to them, Then are you also without understanding? Do you not see that whatever goes into a person from outside cannot defile him, since it enters not his heart, but his stomach, and is expelled? Thus he declared all foods clean. And Jesus said, What comes out of a person is what defiles him. For from within, out of the heart of man, come evil thoughts, sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, coveting, wickedness, deceit, sensuality, envy, slander, pride, foolishness. All these evil things come from within, and they defile a person. Here ends our gospel text. on page four in our hymnal with the confession of our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. We confess together. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty, from where he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, 
the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. may be seated, but I invite the children to come forward at this time. It's a noise. All right, come on up to the steps or floor there. No, nope, I might get that's too far. Yeah, sit down. Oh, wait, you going to sit with me? All right. You want to sit with me? Oh, you're going to sit there? All right. We'll give a moment here. All right, look at this. These are my notes, look at that. Does that look scary? No, it's just the Bible readings. Because I want to talk about the readings we had today. Did you hear the Bible readings today? Well, in our, our first, what's the first reading we do? What's the first reading we do in the church when we begin the service? What do we call that, do you know? Uh, kind of, well, it is because it's a psalm. Our very first thing we do is we read from a psalm and read together responsively. And so our psalm today was 119, and it talks about uh, turning back to God and, and how, we long for his, how we long for his commandments, right? Do you, do you like rules? Do you really? Like, you like rules like clean your room and make your bed? And, no, right? Yeah, the guys, the guys are honest. The guys are honest, right? We, we don't usually like rules because rules kind of, they, they seem like they're work and that they, that they aren't always good for us. But God gives us certain rules called commandments. And you know why he gives us commandments and why our parents give us rules? Do you know why those things are in place? Yeah? To keep us safe. Yep, right? Don't run out in the road. What happens if you run out in the road? Yeah, you might get ran over, especially here with all the construction going on. Um, but sometimes you might trip and fall too, right? Like out here, there's a big, there's a little gap in the road and, and Mike has fallen down a couple times because he goes too fast without thinking. He doesn't doesn't isn't obedient in that the commandments and the rules that our parents give us and that God gives us they do that because they want us to be blessed right like God has commandments that say don't steal right if we took other people's stuff like that's not gonna make us feel better and it's not gonna make anybody else feel better but when nobody is when nobody is stealing everybody is happy because they have the things that they have and they get to use them and they know they're always gonna be there um, if people if we lie or people lie to us then we, then we can't trust anybody. And so like the rule and the commandment not to lie helps us to be able to trust one another and to trust that God and, and each other and our parents are, are always going to be there for us and that they're not going to try to deceive us or trick us. And then there's all, all the other rules are that, uh, that way as well. They're always, all the rules, they're not meant to oppress us or make us sad or make it hard on us. They're meant to make us have a better life and to have a good life. And, and the reality is I think we're really blessed. I think all of our families here are blessed in a lot of ways. But that's because God is taking care of us and we, we want to always remember God and ask him to protect us. And one way he protects us is, is in, in our scriptures we read, uh, Don read about the armor of God. And we've talked about that before. I'm trying to remember, if it wasn't Sunday school, I don't think. Oh no, we did it for Lent. We did it for Lent as our services. We talked about the armor of God. And um, the armor of God is... You put it on your outside to help protect your inside, right? That's why we put on armor or clothes. They help protect our insides. And, and Deuteronomy, the Deuteronomy passage that Taylor read for us, talks about God's commandments for us that way. And they're, they're a way of guarding and protecting our hearts. God's word is a way of protecting our outsides. When, when, when does somebody tend to get messy? When do you tend to get messy? Think about it this way. When you're helping somebody, that's, that's a time you're probably going to get messy, right? If a friend falls down in the mud and you help them, you're going to get a little muddy too. When you go to the hospital and, and, and you see doctors and nurses, 
they're helping people and they're getting covered in all kinds of things, blood and, and all kinds of other icky things. And so they wear clothing to protect them, but their outside is getting dirty. Their inside doesn't get dirty by that stuff, though. It's because it, because that that stuff of that bad stuff that's on the outside, the mud or the dirt or the or the blood and the other things, that they tend to they come onto us on the outside. The armor of God helps protect our bodies and our hearts from that kind of stuff. When somebody is evil to us, if somebody hits you, does that hurt your heart or does that hurt your body? Sometimes it hurts both if we let it. But it hurts our outside, right? And, and sometimes if people say mean words, it comes into our ears and, it, it, and it, it, might, it might hurt our insides if we allow it to. But if we have protection on, if we have the word of God in our hearts and our minds, we can protect ourselves from the things that can make us evil as well. And that's what, that's what Mark is talking about today when Jesus is speaking to his disciples. And Jesus is speaking to his disciples and saying that that you're not unclean unless it's coming out of your heart. So what do you think something evil or unclean from your heart might be that, that could be coming out that God might have been talking about? What kind of things can come out of you that not sin? Yeah, well, what, what does that look like in, in a, from when we... Well, how about the, how about the things we say? Do we say words that can hurt people? Yeah. yeah, we do, don't we? That would be something that Jesus is talking about. That's something that would be evil. How about when we say, say things that, that tell people that they're not very good? Or we call them names. Yeah, those would be sinning things. Or in also our actions. Sometimes we do things that hurt people. Sometimes we do things like stealing that hurts, hurts them in different ways as well, but sometimes we physically hurt them. Or we break things of theirs that hurt, you know, hurt their things as well. And so Jesus is talking about those things. When, when we're doing those things, we're, 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 that those are things that are coming out of our heart and our mind. That means there's been some dirtiness has gotten in there. And, and how can you clean your heart? How can you clean? Who do you, who, who, how do you think you clean your heart? Yeah, Aubrey, do you have an answer? No, not sure. How do you think, Trish? You can talk to God, right? And then that we can read God's word and, and, and it can help to change our hearts. Because only Jesus can change our hearts from, from evil and good, or evil into good. Only he can transform our hearts. And part of that's because he's showing us what does it mean to be good. It means to say an encouraging word. What, get, everybody give an example of an encouraging word. Everybody say something out loud that, that would be encouraging. Yeah? Kind? Caring? How about when you tell your mom, you look pretty this morning, mom? Or you tell dad, you're strong, dad. You're stronger than any man in the whole world. You don't tell your dads that? No? Do you tell your moms and grandmothers that they're pretty? Yeah. And that really helps their hearts, doesn't it? And that's a good thing, right? And Jesus tells us to encourage one another that way. And so, so that's the that's the important thing about God's word, and we're gonna we're gonna learn about some things today, probably in the presentation, about people who are in need because their their lives have been full of people that have been hurting them, and um, we thankfully have people and resources that help people when they've been hurt and help them to feel safe and secure, so that they can be strong again and go back and and live life in a full way. And we know that God. God, when God is a part of that, that really helps the healing and helps people to be strong for one another so much more. Helps them bear the burdens. So, all right, you guys have been so patient and so good. Thank you for coming up here. Normally they wouldn't be this long, but I didn't get to do a sermon today, so you got it. Sorry. But you get a sucker. See, nobody else gets a sucker after that. So I'm going to hand you your sucker. No, I'm going to give you the sucker after we pray. Yeah. See, I'm not completely... Uh, goofy. All right, bow your heads and your hearts and um, pray along with me this time. Dear Jesus, Dear Jesus thank, you for our families, thank you for our families and especially our parents. Especially our parents. Help us to obey them, us to obey them so, that so that they and us will be blessed. Will be blessed. Thank, you, Lord, thank you, Lord, for keeping us safe. 
Help us to provide safety to others. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, everybody come up and grab a sucker, and then you can go back to your seat. And tell your moms they look pretty every day, not just this morning. And we continue our service with the next song, which I don't have in front of me, but you can read it in your bulletin. Pastor said, my name's Colleen Hoffman, and I'm from Safe Place in Eastern South Dakota, formerly known as Mitchell Area Safe House. So just a show of hands, kind of, have you heard of Mitchell Area Safe House before or Safe Place? Wonderful, good, I'm glad. But I'm gonna tell you a little bit more because with our name change, we have lots of services that I don't know if you guys are aware of and how involved we are in your community. So I wanna share that with you. So we've been in, our organization's been around for nearly um, 30 years. We started like back in 1984. It was a group of people that got together. It was actually the Davidson County Child Protection Team that said they needed to do something to help find a safe place for people to go. Um, the services that we offer now are emergency services, we have housing services, and then we can be able to be advocates in-house and out-of-house. 
And then we can also have family support services, which is our um, family visitation center. This just talks a little bit about our history. So I don't know, we started out at a place over by the library in Mitchell and a lady by the name of Tanta Osterhaus had given us money to be able to pay for that building, um, the existing mortgage, and then pay for a new building. And that's where we currently are now. And the name of that place is Tanta's House, and that's the Mitchell Area Safe House and the Family Visitation Center. We moved to that place to bring the two organizations together. We recently got a grant um, in 2021 and now next year in 2023, we're gonna break ground and have a new shelter. Um, it's something that we kind of been grandfathered in with a lot of our things, but we're so grateful that we're gonna have a bigger place, can be more accommodating and a safer place for people. Really our mission is to provide a safe and empowering environment for victims of domestic violence, sexual assault, stalking, and human trafficking as well. So we cover eight counties. So we are in Mitchell and Davidson County, but we travel the eight counties, which is Aurora, um, Davidson, Douglas, Hanson, Hutchinson, Minor, Gerald, and Sanborn. And I'll tell you a little bit more when we get to our community outreach. But these are the services that we offer. We have emergency shelter. We have advocacy services. We have our family visitation center. We also help with housing, support groups, and outreach. With our emergency shelter, we have um, hold up to 27 people in our shelter. And what we can do in our other building is we're gonna be ADA compliant. So if anyone has an illness that we need to quarantine, we'll be able to do that. We'll be able to house males on site. We won't have to utilize a hotel motel. So that'll be something that we can be encompassing and be able to be all inclusive. And our place now has an alarm system so that if anything does happen, law enforcement can be there. And our other building, we will have 10 rooms. We'll have two on the main floor and then we'll have eight upstairs. And it'll be really nice, especially if we get a bigger family. We don't have to cram them all into one room. We'll have like a Jack and Jill set up where there'll be two rooms and then there'll be a bathroom in the middle so that they'll have more space. Um, advocates, they're on call 24 hours a day. When we had COVID, it was hard to reach out and people to come to us. So what we did with our new website is we have a chat feature where you can actually go on there and chat with an advocate um, if you're not able to call. And our answer calls are 24 hours a day. We have advocacy services, so we also help in-house with advocacy, but we can help outside of that as well. So if somebody is um, a victim of sexual assault, we help with the detectives and sit and be that support system for them. We also help file protection orders if they need that extra added security, we can go with them and be an advocate through the court system. And then we can also help with safety planning because sometimes shelter might not be the answer. There might be a safe place for them to go. Maybe they might need safety in the community versus them coming to us. We can safety plan and see what that looks like. Through the Family Visitation Center, we work with the Department of um, Social Services, the Child Protective Services, when children need to see their parents if there's an abuse and neglect case then parents can come and visit them at the visitation center. They can do up to two hour visits. And with our one grant, the DSS um, families, we can come and get the parent and the child and bring them to the center to be able to visit as well. So that's a nice added feature that we do have. We also do assisted exchanges. So if somebody does have a protection order or it's a really tough case where parents aren't getting along, at least this will be a safe exchange where they can come and exchange the children. And our new building will have a separate entrance for custodial and non-custodial parents, which will be a lot safer than our, we have the same entrance now, but it has to be where one will come at one time and one will come at another. This way then they will be able to um, coincide. Family services, we have our financial and housing. We got this back in 2013 through the South Dakota um, housing grant that way we can help pay for someone's rent um, utilities 
And it's really nice if someone comes into shelter and doesn't have a lot with them and needs to kind of start over, that's really what this program can do. They can actually help up to 24 months if need be, but this really helps someone get into something. If we even have someone in the community that's homeless, they can come in through eligibility, they might be able to be on this program as well too. So it's not just the people that are in shelter, it might be someone else that's in need that may need this service. We have support groups, support groups for women. We have groups for um, batters, it's a 27 week program, which they go through the power and control wheel. They just learn the tactics that are happening in their home, they practice healthy ways to do that so that they can be able to change and we can bring that family back together if that's the need. And then parenting classes, there's two separate parenting classes. We have the Common Sense Parenting, which is out of Boys Town. That's kind of the school age appropriate one. And then the, the Responsive Parenting, which is that birth to three, is the other class that we have. Community Outreach. We're so blessed the last couple of years to be able to get out into the communities. Like I said, we cover an eight county radius. So with my job, I get to go out once or twice a week to all the communities and talk to everybody. So especially in this community, what I've done in Douglas County is each month there is something different that I focus on. So like January was stocking. I partnered with the community library. Um, Beck has been wonderful in letting me have some of our brochures and materials there. Like I said, if anybody wants to talk to an advocate, you can get on the computer at the library and chat with someone right there. Um, in February was teen dating. We've really partnered with the schools. We partner with law enforcement. We partner with congregations because you guys are our advocates. That's why we want to communicate um, the need and just get you the awareness and the education because if you can spot the signs, recognize what's going on, then you'll be able to refer them to our services and we can work together. That's why we want to come out into these communities. So these are some of our statistics from last year, so you can kind of get a scope of what we worked with just in our eight county region. So we sheltered 155 clients just in shelter. We answered 287 crisis calls. Those are the crisis calls that come in. Do you need safety planning, a protection order? Do you need to come into shelter? Those are some of the things that we answer to. Um, we've helped um, 156 clients, but that looked like um, we did 27 protection orders, we had 16 sexual assaults, and we had seven human trafficking cases. We've been seeing an increase in human trafficking, and I don't know if it's because we partnered with Call to Freedom a few years ago and got that education of what that looks like, because our advocates are more trained in domestic violence and sexual assault. But once we did that partnership, we've really been able to identify and get them the appropriate services that they need. So if you identify a human trafficking victim, and can't get over to Sioux Falls so that call to freedom, call us. We have a case manager that we can call and they can come and help us. Like I said, the, um, we had the housing. We've helped 75 housing clients last year and they serve 57 families in the Family Visitation Center. Um, and then out in the communities last year, we did 21 community education pieces and that's either me coming and talking to congregations or we've been doing trainings with EMTs. We've been training them what to look for, for if they go out on a call and someone's been injured, they can at least maybe ask the question of what's been happening so that way they can get them the services that they need. So we're not the only organization um, in South Dakota. I wanna let you know that there are over 30 programs that do the same thing that we do. I just wanted to come out to you because this is your local place that you can come and get services, but know that all the ones that are in the red are all the different programs that we offer in South Dakota. So we're part of the South Dakota network, so we all network together. So if, like I said, if somebody doesn't feel safe in our area, then maybe we can try another shelter or maybe we can try another service. We all work together. I know that's that collaboration piece and that's why this community education is so important. We're actually underneath, if you want to look more into our services, we're under the Department of Public Safety. So public safety means we're under with law enforcement, we're under with the prosecutors, and that's where our services lie. And then the yellow um, stars, those are our visitation centers. So those are few and far between. We don't have a lot of them. And when you look, West River, 
um, it's Mitchell and then it's Rapid City. So know that um, our visitation center is probably the biggest need and our biggest support that we have. And a lot of people don't realize that we have that for the kiddos and for the parents to have a safe you know, place to visit. That's why it's so important that we come too because I know everybody knows we have a shelter, but I want to let you guys know that we have the visitation center as well. So if you want to do anything else, contact us. You can find us on Facebook, you can find us online. And then these are our crisis numbers. I brought a lot of our stuff. The promotional stuff we have has our crisis hotline number on there. So if you give that to anybody, tell them that's the crisis hotline. And I also have lots of handouts if you need any of those. October is um, Domestic Violence Awareness Month. So I'm gonna be going out into the communities and talking about painting the town purple. So we're encouraging everybody to decorate in purple, either your doors or your house or your window. Um, and we actually have a little contest going on. So on October 21st, we'll actually vote to see who has the best decorated purple um, door or building or whatever you like to do. Um, and then also October 3rd, we're having like a unity day, so a day of prayer. They do that every year nationally. And with that, then you can come and just show your support. We'll have, um, we're joining with uh, Mitchell Fusion Church and gonna have lots of activities on that day. Um, like I said, I'll stay around for any questions, but I just wanted to give you a nice overview of what we do. If you like, I can answer some questions now, or like I said, I'll be here. I have the table, and I'll be joining you um, later on. Yeah, are there any questions currently that somebody has? Uh, Betty? What are your needs? So our current needs are those emergency needs. So just think if you're coming in for an emergency, what you would need, which would be like shampoo, conditioner, and just those basic needs. Um, like the bigger items, like the clothing and some of those things, we actually distribute them to Goodwill and Salvation Army so then someone can get a voucher to be able to do that shopping. We keep in house those emergency things. So think about like when you're getting ready in the morning, like the toothpaste, toothbrush, because when they come, if they don't come with anything, we want to get them those basic immediate needs. And it's always good too to get like gift cards. So if someone is fleeing, is not going to stay with us, then we can give them a gift card to be able to get gas or to get something on the road to get to that next shelter. The little travel size. Yep, those are very helpful too, and then whatever we don't use, we share with our community partners. Any other questions for now? Uh, she will be, she'll be hanging out for the meal, and then they can stay for a little while as well. She's got a table, uh, we have the table set up in the entryway. Um, so yeah, check out the resources, make sure to connect with her throughout the mealtime after the service. So, All right, if there's no other questions then, uh, We'll have Steve go back to the organ. I'll take care of breaking this down here. Our next song is Built on the Rock, the Church Doth Stand, number 294.
our service with our offering. I invite the ushers to come forward at this time. Following the offering, we'll remain seated going into prayer. And we'll rise for the Lord's Prayer later. extra time to pray today, so I invite you, if you need to, to sit down at this time. Uh, if you would like to remain standing for the prayer, you can, though. <laughs> Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you for uh, Colleen taking the time out of her schedule to, as part of her, her work as well to come and share with us this morning. And so we ask, Lord, that you bless this offering, the amount that goes to Safe Place. We ask you to bless and multiply and, and use that in, in ways beyond our understanding. Stretch those dollars in this time of inflation and, and really help them to, to, to make every one of those uh, dollars and cents to, to have a mission and a purpose that is fulfilled and glorifies you, Lord, through the service to your people, the ones especially who are hurting and in need. And we ask you, Lord, the, the remaining offerings as well, that they bless home missions and anywhere else that they were designated to, Lord. We, again, we ask that you use this resource, and as well as our time resource that we sacrifice to you, we ask that you use them in ways that they are multiplied and made bountiful, and that they give glory to your name, and that they lift up and encourage your people around the world, and that they draw others who are not your people into your relationship with you, that they might be transformed and made whole and made clean. Lord, this morning we have many things on our minds. I want to be able to address many of them and, and, and for us to spend this time with you, Lord. And, and I think especially of, of Pat right now, who would, would much rather be here with us if she could. And, and we ask, Lord, that you continue to work miracles in her recovery. And we thank you for, for the way that you've provided safety through her, her accident. And, and now, Lord, we ask that you give her uh, strength and, and resiliency to to go the distance through this recovery in this time and that you continue to heal her back and also at the same time give uh, her and Larry patience as they uh, await each step of the process of healing that back and the muscles and the, the bone there. Uh, Lord, give them uh, endurance through that time as well and help also that further injury does not occur by going too fast either or through any accidents or trips or falls. And so bless them in that time, Lord. We, we pray that they're able to come closer to home, to Mitchell, 
in the near future here as well, Lord, and that you bless them in this journey and any who visit with them, that they may encourage one another and give glory to you for the way that you have protected her in that. Lord, we also pray a blessing upon the Cleve family, and I forgot to note it earlier, but in my email this week we noted their, their teenage daughter, Kate, uh, had a twisted uh, intestines and needed to have that taken care of medically in a rather urgent fashion, Lord. And so we thank you for the way that you've worked through that. We thank you for being with John and Lynn as they uh, were trying to figure out what was going on with their daughter and getting the care that they needed. And we're thankful now that they can rest in this moment uh, as her healing and recovery is well on to a favorable outcome, Lord. And, and we ask that you be also with her siblings who who uh, saw her in need and were unable to do anything directly to help her other than to pray. And so we ask that you bless their family in that, especially as they are considering and wondering what your will is for their life, Lord, whether it involves moving or, or what it may mean for them in their local area. And so be with them and help them to have wisdom and understanding from you on how best to proceed. Make clear to them what sacrifices you're maybe asking them to make in order to step out in faith and trust you in this time. But in the meanwhile, be with them in the recovery of Kate from her surgeries and procedures. Uh, Lord, we thank you for protecting Dee and, and all of us uh, from uh, the animals in the area. Lord, we thank you for the, our vehicles that keep us safe in some cases and, and in many ways the way that you protect us from so many critters that could run out in front of us at any time. We ask you, Lord, to bring peace upon all of us who may be anxious about accidents or, or anxious in situations like that. Um, we ask you, Lord, to, to protect us and help us to see and feel the reality of your protection in our hearts and minds. Help us to, to take these things to heart and just really know and see through the testimonies that you've given us this past week that you are real and that you are living and that you are active even in the face of all the evil we may see in the world and the hurts and the needs that we see. Lord, we ask you, ask you especially to be with the Overweg family in the loss of their 13-year-old son. And we ask you, Lord, also to be with Seth, who happened to be the one that was there, and, and, and hopefully, it, as far as we know, not a cause of it, but affected directly in being a first responder to a loss of life. And life is so precious. It's such a great gift that you've given us, Lord, and we recognize when it's lost, and we recognize when, when people are hurt and damaged, that these are great and evil things that aren't good. Death is not a good thing that you intended, but it came into the world because of our, our wicked and sinful hearts, Lord, because of the choice you gave us that we could choose to love and to follow you or we could choose to reject you and chase after evil and disobedience. And so, Lord, as we see and hear these evil things that happen around us all the time, some of them accidental, some of them deliberate, may you guard and protect our hearts that we might not become wicked and corrupted inside of ourselves, that we might not repay evil for evil, but return evil with good. For that is what you did on the cross, ultimately, so that we might have salvation from our sin and from our corruption of our hearts. Lord, encourage us in that. You know, as we, as we hear about the needs that were met last year, let us rejoice in not just Mitchell's Safe Place, but all of the partnering agencies as well, Lord, and all the neighbors in our state and in our communities and in our homes and neighborhoods themselves, that all of them may remain connected to one another and diligent in looking around and seeing people in need or seeing those who are showing signs that there's something that's not right. And help us not shy away from the person who may be crying or the person who may be hurting or the person who may be suddenly being a came silent when they normally are vocal or the person who suddenly became vocal and normally they are silent and help us to step toward them and ask them what's going on how can we help and help us to have listening ears and discerning hearts to know that there are people around us hurting every day even within our own congregation Help us to not be ignorant of these things, but to be made known that we might share one another's burdens together in love, not to lord it over one another or to gloat, but in order that we might lift one another up when we are hurt and broken. And not just within our congregation, but thinking of Eastern and South Dakota and the, and the counties that are represented this morning through Colleen and Safe Place. We ask you, Lord, to bless her and her work, bless her and her family in that work as well, Lord, and the the, the way that that can affect the, 
the, the mind and the heart and the soul really seeing such hurt and need in the, in the world and seeing and touching it firsthand and having it not be outside or in another place or in the big cities, but having it knowing, knowing that it's in our areas as well. Guard our hearts and minds that we are not broken by that, but instead help us to draw strength from you and your word that you have called us to help in these things and in different ways and in different times with actions or with words or with finances perhaps help us to be the best neighbors that we can be not just to those we love and who are our friends but to our enemies as well that in order that they might be transformed and drawn to the truth Lord, we thank you for the WMF rally this past weekend. They pray that the women are encouraged, that they may go back as grandmothers and mothers and, and, and encourage their families and their fellow women in their churches. We pray that more and more ways can be found in order to reach our families and our women and our mothers especially, that we might strengthen our homes, that we may guard them as best we can, that we might raise our children up and, and raise them to be the best and godliest people that they may be godly in the sense that they will be good, but also that they will be strong and courageous because they will have the truth in their hearts and their minds. And regardless of their circumstances that our children or that we may face, that we can stand boldly and say that we are strong and courageous because we stand on the rock, on the Lord God Almighty, who made us and who made our neighbors, and that has given us value. Help us to share that identity of truth and value to those whom we come in contact with, even those who we think are strong. Help us to remind them that they are created by God, that they have value and they have a purpose and a mission that God has designed them for. And help us to encourage one another in that knowledge that we might not grow tired or weary in doing the work of the Lord. Lord, we pray for the governance of our local communities and our homes, that they be governed by godly wisdom and by people who acknowledge you, Lord, as the creator and authority of the universe. And likewise, may that extend to our counties and our states and our national and world governments as well. May those who disavow and reject you, Lord, may they be brought to humble submission before they do harm. And those who are godly and submit to your authority and wisdom, Lord, who, those who pray, those who read your word, those who speak with you and engage in fellowship with other believers, may they be blessed, may their work be rewarded, and may their work be bountiful and produce a great harvest. And may you bless the harvest this fall, Lord, and we thank you for the rain this morning. May you continue to rip, rip, refresh and replenish the ground with water. May you guard and protect our farmers in their work and their care and all of our workers in our congregation, Lord in the electric company as well, all those uh, nursing, and, and in so many ways our teachers as well, in so many ways our jobs have risks, they have danger, they expose us to things that can hurt us and harm us. We ask, Lord, protect, and then bless the work that is done, that our teachers may teach well, but not just teach, but lead by example and encourage those that they have care over that those who provide us safety through power and safety through policing and safety through nursing and doctoring, that all of them may be blessed in their work as well. And Lord, whatever else remains in our hearts and minds that maybe wasn't addressed this morning or that we've been carrying as a burden or, or as a joy that we desire to share, we share them with you now in this moment of silence. We thank you, Lord. Thank you for hearing us and being there to comfort us when our hearts are crying and when our, our hearts are also joyful. Thank you for being the, the best fatherly, most faithful, trust, trusting example in our lives of leadership. We continue our service with our Lord's Prayer. I invite you to rise as you are able. We pray together as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. For our benediction, our good word for the Lord today, I want to go back to our call to worship, Psalm 119, and I'm going to go through verses 132 to 135, but making them personal to us today from God. Turn to me and be gracious to me, as is your way with those who love your name. We ask God to turn to us and be gracious to us. Keep steady our steps according to your promise, Lord, and let no iniquity get dominion over us. Redeem us from man's oppression that we may keep your precepts. Make your face shine upon your servants and teach us your statutes. Receive the sign of the cross. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we conclude this service. Amen. so we can go downstairs and and, uh, get in line and be ready to go. Be present at our table, Lord. Be here and everywhere adored. These mercies bless and grant that we may strengthen for your service. not sure how we're doing dismissal today so I'll have you to the seat and I think the the uh, you'll be out